Hey y'all, hi. So today's video is going to be a quick, I, I mean, famous last words, but I am conceiving of it as a quick kind of casual, but actually pretty well-informed review of the Jones Road Miracle Balm, which I think as of right now is weirdly to me, because before this started happening, I hadn't really looked it up, the most highly requested product for me to review on my channel. I'll explain a little bit more when I get into the meat of the video. I'm gonna talk about what it is, what it's supposed to do, what my experience has been using it because I've had it for a couple of weeks. I have two colors, flushed and bronze, and then I'm going to apply it. I'm not wearing it right now. I'm going to apply it in front of you. We will discuss, I'll give you my final thoughts, and that will be the sum of it. If this is your first time to my channel and you like this, I hope that you'll subscribe and come back and watch some more videos. I mostly make beauty content, sometimes little fashion content. I'm really interested in the way that aesthetics can contribute to joy and quality of life, but I try not to to promote overspending. And my name is Hannah. I can't remember if I said that. <laughs> That's it. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So every once in a while in a video, I kind of put out a call for review requests. I'm like, what's the thing you would most like to see me review? And ever since I started doing that, I've noticed that there's a flood of people in the comments saying Jones Road Miracle Balm. And when it first started, I was like, oh, that's just some obscure thing. And I kind of ignored it. And then I realized that it was like every time I ask what you want to see me review, probably the thing that has the most requests, like the most specific requests in the comments, where it's a specific product from a specific specific brand being requested by name. And I was like, why is everybody so interested in this? Why does everyone know about this specific product from this brand? And I don't, like I'm not getting ad targeted for it. I've looked into it obviously because people were leaving these comments, but it just seemed a little bit off the beaten path. However, after I bought these balms, these Miracle Balms to review, I did start getting Instagram ad targeted from Jones Road Beauty with the ad that shows Bobby Brown talking at length. Jones Road Beauty, I'll briefly say is the current brand of the makeup artist Bobby Brown. So she's a total icon, you know, Bobby Brown Beauty launched decades ago. Has always been a really successful, reputable brand with a huge following. Some years ago, I think a few years ago, I'm not sure how long ago, but relatively recently, you know, when you're looking at the scope of her entire career, Bobby Brown left, I believe, Bobby Brown Cosmetics and launched a new brand, Jones Road. So in this ad, it's her holding forth about why the Miracle Balm is so amazing. And even though I already owned it and was testing it when I saw the ad, I was like, oh yeah, I want to buy that. <laughs> I mean, like it really, really worked on me. And then I started to get an inkling of why so many people are interested in this product and want to see reviews answering the question, is it all that it's cracked up to be? Because I mean, it's right there in the name. It's being billed as a miracle product. And it occupies this confusing position in makeup because it's like an, a hybrid in between. It's not this, it's not that. Which is another thing that causes people, I think, to want reviews from someone who's actually tried the product. So the description on the Jones Road website site says, a wash of soft focus moisture to perfect and enhance skin. Like that's the description of what you're like, what is it exactly? Is it a blush? Is it a skincare product? It's a wash of soft focus moisture to perfect and enhance skin. And you read that and then you're like going to YouTube and Googling <laughs> Joan Road Miracle Balm review, you know? A light reflecting super product that's as versatile as it is simple to use. Wear Miracle Balm alone or layer on top of a foundation for an instant refresh. So it's saying it's a wash of of soft focus moisture. It's saying it's a super product. It's not really telling us what it's supposed to be. And I feel like there are pros and cons of that. I've actually spoken at length lately about how I think that brands can get themselves into trouble by not picking a lane. It's like, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a blush? Is it a balm? Is it skincare? Is it makeup? I think a lot of products flop in the gray area, but every once in a while, I think a product really takes off because it has failed to align itself with something more traditional. And so people who are leery of makeup, maybe at all, feel more comfortable with it. And I think that that is maybe what has happened with Miracle Balm. And it's probably one of the culprits, if not the culprit, like one of the reasons that other brands are trying to succeed in occupying the gray area. And I just think it's a relatively rare occurrence that a brand can do this and actually make it work. But that made me all the more intrigued, right? So drilling down a little bit into <laughs> the description on the website and the directions, we find that it's essentially a cheek product. So I feel as though essentially it is a blush, but it's one of those sort of multi-purpose balmy blushes that can be used on the lips, but it's really intended to be a product for this part of the face. To me, that's a blush. 
Of course, it has qualities that could be called highlighting qualities, it does things that some products build as highlighters try to do. And some of the colors on some people do what traditionally marketed bronzers do as well. So it's, I think, a cheek product, even though they seem unwilling to say that in the name or in the description. But it's a cheek product that kind of muddles the categories of cheek product and therefore I think for a lot of people diffuses the anxiety about whether you're doing it right when you apply cheek makeup. And for me, for another reason, I quite like that muddling. I think of highlighter and bronzer and blush kind of all as the same thing. I feel like the delineations are a little bit artificial for those categories and the way that I use my cheek makeup collection is just like all as one type of thing. So this aligns with how I think of cheek makeup as well. All right, practical physical matters. What is it? So it's, it comes in these pots with lids that screw off like a giant tub of lip balm. These colors are not my first choice. I ordered from Credo and they had most of them not in stock. So I just got two that I thought would kind of work and the colors totally do work, but they're a little bit saturated with pigment for me. You know, I would have preferred one of the ones that was a little bit more muted and there are several that are more muted than this, than either one of these, but I was ready to do this review and I just went with it. So it has a hard surface as you can see and the instructions say to break the surface, which is quite easy, right? It's it's sealed over, but it's soft. It's not like really, really hard. And then to emulsify, warm up a little bit of the product so that it becomes like a melty cream. And again, this is very easy to do. And here is flushed. It has a strong herbal scent. That's quite unusual. I mean, it really does smell distinctively like an herb, but I can't put my finger on it. Like it's not lavender, maybe a little bit of lemon balm, but it's not specifically rosemary or specifically lavender, specifically lemon or something. It's just definitely herbal. So there I've gotten quite a lot of each of these two colors onto my finger, all emulsified and creamy. And, and you can see the pigment's there, you know? I think Flush, the pink one, is a little bit more of that, just a slight bit more of that opacity of pigment, and bronze is a little bit more translucent, but just a little bit. It's weird to think of swatching this product because it is, it's so a balm. It really is. It feels like a skincare product, like the way that you break the surface and make it emollient like that. It, it really doesn't feel like it makes sense just watch it. I don't know how to explain that, but of course the swatches will tell you something. It's just, I'm trying to express to you this liminal space that it occupies. One of the things that that's causing me to feel is that it's a, it's weird to swatch it. I think it's because it doesn't look like this on the cheeks. It's definitely something the way that I've been using it. I spread it out, I rub it in, it melts into the skin, and it sort of takes on a, a different character when it's on the cheeks. So these swatches, they might tell you something, but they're not really going to tell you how it would look on the cheeks, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Maybe what you can see close up there is that bronze has a bit of sheen in it that actually comes from added shine particles. So what does it feel like? It feels, I mean, you can kind of tell just by how it behaves, setting and then having to be broken through, but melting quite easily when you warm it up. It feels like a very hardened Vaseline, but quite rich once you start working it up and melting it, quite rich. It's not sticky, which is nice. Balm is absolutely the best word to describe it. It's just, it's so abundant, you know? There's so much of it in here. You break the surface and it's just like these piles of it, and you start turning it into a cream and it's just, there's so much of it. It feels different, again, from makeup because it's like this big pot of stuff. And I do think that contributes to the feeling of it being multi-purpose, the feeling of it not being precious, the feeling of it being easy to use. I think that contributes to its approachability. And I think it contributes to the feeling that it's some kind of skincare. It also doesn't really feel greasy. So I said very hardened Vaseline to kind of give a reference point from something else that is in a tub and that sort of has a set quality that can be turned into something melted or more emollient, like a cream type substance. But it doesn't feel like petroleum jelly at all. It doesn't have a greasiness either. That's the thing that's interesting about it. It melts. When you think about something that has like a lot of coconut oil in it, for example, I don't think this has any coconut oil in it. But a lot of products that are being delivered as balms that have a lot of oils in them, they start to melt and then they turn into like a melty oil cream and they feel greasy. And this doesn't do that. I think that that's probably its saving grace, for me at least, and probably for a lot of people, that it melts, but it, it retains this sort of beefiness 
It sort of retains body in a way rather than becoming extremely slippy. And I think that that affects the way that it applies to the face, the way that it sort of semi sets down and the way that it wears throughout the day. So I'm going to um, just pin my hair back a little bit. I had a lot of trepidation going into testing this product because if you've been around, you know. I don't like cheek products. There are so many cheek products on the market, you know, over the past five years that are trying to give that dewy glass skin look and they do it by never setting, right? They do it by just being Vaseline or being oil on your cheeks. And I, what I was, the sentence I started but didn't finish was that if you've been around, you know that I don't like that. I don't like to feel like I'm going around with Vaseline on my cheeks. I like having my hair down. It's a little bit wild. And I don't like feeling like stuff that touches my face, like hair is going to stick to it or that I use my phone or even touch my face with my hands. That product is going to get all over it and get disturbed on my face. I really, really don't like that. I'm always looking for highlighters and blushes that are kind of creamy, but have enough body to really set down or actually transform and become set in like a liquid eyeliner way on the face to avoid that. And this just, it has stays greasy on the cheeks all day written all over it. I feel, or I, ha I had felt that way. And I think that was why I put off this review for so long, even though I was getting all of those requests. And when I began testing it, that was the thing that I was the most worried about. However, when I started applying it, it began to win me over first because of how it looks. I've only used my fingers with it. And I love using a brush. This is kind of rare for me, but again, it doesn't feel like a brush would be a good idea. Although I think Bobbi Brown does apply it with a brush in some of the videos I've seen. It just doesn't make sense. I'm trying to rub it into my skin like skincare. That's what it's telling me to do. That's how I've been wearing it. It's it's like a it's like skincare that only goes on part of the face and has some color. So it's really pink on me, this color, flushed, but I actually have found that it works. It starts out looking actually quite pigmented, but then I think it looks great. I mean, it just becomes one with the skin. The color's there, but it looks to me so natural. Like the way my cheek feels is that it's very moisturized. It feels like a really beefy moisturizer. It feels like a moisturizer that stained my skin this color. That's the vibe. And that's why even though it doesn't set down completely and it doesn't become like a powder or dry to the touch surface, that's why I've been able to handle it because I just feel like my cheeks are very moisturized and the color feels like it's not going anywhere. So even if something were to touch my face throughout the day, my hair were to sort of briefly get stuck and then I were to brush it out, it won't change the application. It's very sturdy once it's been like rubbed into the skin. I think that is, that's the quality that has made it sustainable for me because I just don't like that feeling that there's this like precious application of something on my face and it's easy to disturb it. I like being able to live, you know? So again, quite pigmented at the outset, feeling a little scary right at the outset. And then I just keep rubbing it in like some sort of cheek specific skincare. Okay, I put more on this side. I went in with more. You can see it's starting to build up into kind of a blush draping look, which I love. I was trying to give you a sense of what it looks like applied more naturally. Now we're getting into like how I've been wearing it, basically more like this. I'm gonna catch the other side up to speed. So even though that's a lot of color, I still feel like it's very my cheeks, but better because this color does kind of look the way that my skin looks when I get sunburned, you know? You can just really see my real skin through it. That's the thing because all I've done is like rub it into my skin. This product just never ever looks like makeup sitting on the skin. And I think that the thing that's maybe made it so successful is that it is that way and yet it has that pigment. So a lot of things that never look like makeup and they're like no makeup makeup, they're just, they're really lightly pigmented and you can't really brighten up your face with them or change the effect, it's just is really subtle. But these, they do pack quite a punch and you can build them. So it's satisfying in terms of like transformation. You really do look like you've made a change. Like I look really different in terms of the way the effect of my face different than I did before I put it on. But you just can't see the product, even when you look really up close with your eyes. Like if you put your eyes right here and you looked, you can't see the substance of the product. I like it. I was very skeptical at first. <laughs> I was I, I was skeptical. I was putting it on. I was like, this is goopy. It smells weird. It's going to stay tacky. And then I rubbed it and rubbed it in and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, Bobby. Like that's how it was. So I'm going to put a little bit of the bronze. I have ended up wearing the pink one the most. But I am going to put a little bit of the bronze on just to kind of show. You're supposed to be able to blend the colors together, sort of mix and make a custom color. And, you know, you can, but I don't really like the way the bronze is going over the pink. It's almost like it's almost like it's pushing the pink 
away rather than really like blending into it. I surprised myself by really loving the pink one because again, even though it feels really bright for me in terms of the color palette that I tend towards in clothing and in the way that makeup looks objectively, color wise, that pink when it's sheared out and it's really wetted to my skin, it is a natural color for me. Like it is the color that I turn when I get flushed or when I get burnt. And I think that that's why it's working so well. Since I'm not really doing the most for it, there's a buffed out swatch of the bronze one. So you can kind of get a sense of how it would look if I really rubbed it into the skin. And I have done a look where I applied the bronze all over. I found I had to do it more thinly. I wasn't able to build it as much. I think it's that thing where because it has the particles in it and because my skin's so pale and the, some of the particles and the pigments are on the darker side for me, even though these colors are supposed to be universal and there are pictures of models of all skin tones on the website wearing all the colors. And I think it's true. I think a lot of people can wear most of the colors. Even though that's true, just have to be a little bit more careful with this one for it not to look patchy on me because it is more translucent and it is much darker than my skin when it builds. If it's not really sheared out and really blended into my skin, if there's a part of it where it's layered on top of itself and that layering isn't blended, it'll look patchy on me. And I don't think that would be the case for that color with everyone, but I've just gotten along much better with the pink. I've also been using it on my lips. Unlike many cheek products that are billed as being appropriate for the lips as well, it feels like it belongs on the lips and that's because of the scent. Because of that herbal scent, it really feels correct to put it on my lips as well. The one thing that I haven't really done is to wear it, a thick application of it like I have on today, to wear it all day with my hair down. Since I started testing this, which is weeks ago at this point, every time I snatch myself with my hair, like every time I pin it back pretty sharply or like part it and put the pins in, every time I do that, I want to apply this. Like nothing else will do but this because it's just so natural looking, so glossy, and it looks good all day. It's really quite sturdy. But when I have all my hair flying around, I just feel less prone to doing that. I'm trying to see if it'll stick. Yeah. Well, so it's stuck because I stuck it there with my hands. But then when I shook my head, it... Hmm. Yeah, I could see things getting stuck to it. I could see my hair getting stuck to it. I'll say that's the thing that I like the least about it. But because I've gotten so into the way that it looks and feels, especially how nourishing, like it really feels like it's nourishing my skin. And my skin's been so dry lately that a lot of my normal makeup hasn't looked good on it. So because I've, I've really gotten sold on it because of how it looks, I've come to think of that, you know, slight tackiness throughout the day as like the price you pay for wearing it, like the price I pay for choosing to wear it. But it is the thing that's keeping me from wearing it like every single day. I've really come to think of it as a product that I reach for when my hair is out of my face, pretty much exclusively. But I'm going to wear my hair down for the rest of today. I'm going to wear it for the rest of today. So I'll pin a comment talking about how it went. If I felt like it got disturbed, if I felt annoyed by it, that's the thing that will get me. If I feel annoyed by it or I feel like it's causing my face hair situation to feel messy, I'll pin a comment because maybe it won't be as bad as I'm worried that it will be. So final thoughts. As you can probably tell, unexpectedly, this product really sold itself to me. Even though there were a lot of strikes against it, it promised to stay sticky throughout the day. It's doing that hybrid thing where it's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's something in between. I wasn't able to get the colors that I wanted, right? I had to get these two colors that were basically just randomly picked for me. I really expected to dislike it. Like I went into testing it being like, I'm gonna break the internet by being like, I hate Jones Road Miracle Ball. So against all of those odds, it really sold itself to me. Right now I'm like, I want to try, I really want to try the natural color, the one that's like doesn't have very much pigment in it at all that I think actually is probably like a skincare product. I like the way that it hydrates my skin so much that I could kind of see myself using that almost as a primer or like really all over my skin in places on my skin where I can't put these two because they have too much pigment in them. I mean, I've been this close to buying it. Like that's how much I, I'm interested in that the most most lightly pigmented version of this and it doesn't have any shine in it. And there's one called Magic Hour that's supposedly Bobbi Brown's favorite. And there's one, a dusty rose colored one that might be called Dusty Rose, can't remember right now. I just, I've continued to visit the website and kind of scope out the other colors because I'm so impressed by the natural glow, like the truly natural, minimal feeling, but distinctive enhancement that it gives to the skin. I'm just really into that right now. And it delivered that so 
so hardcore that it erased all of my doubts, even though I went into it with a lot of doubts. However, I realized kind of in the course of voicing my feelings about bronze during this review that I would caution against getting one that looks much darker than your skin. So if you're fair like I am, there are all of these beautiful, deep, rich colors. And on the website, it shows them on models of all different skin tones. And part of me was like, I should get the really deep, rich, bronzy one or like the kind of like dusky, cherry, cordial cherry colored one because they look so beautiful. But I don't think that they're quite as versatile, at least in that direction, as the website makes it seem. And by that direction, I mean if you have lighter skin and you're putting on one that's much darker than your skin. I think it's a little harder to keep it from looking patchy in that case. However, and of course I don't know this firsthand, but based on working with these, I would imagine that if most of the colors are lighter than your skin, they're all going to be quite versatile for you. Like I would imagine that it works in the other direction. Of course, you might not get as much color, like it's not going to look as bright or as saturated if you choose one that's much lighter than your skin, but I think it would probably still be really beautiful. Maybe for some of them beautiful in the way or useful in the way that I'm imagining that the almost completely colorless one would be for me, you know, like more of a tint. So I feel like there's a little bit of a limit to the shade universality of this range or this shade flexibility. A lot of the shades are going to work for a lot of people, but I don't feel like all of them will work for everyone. And I feel like I kind of ended up with one that I have to struggle with, which is bronze. And I have one more thing to say before I go, which is that even though I really like this and I'm like, oh yes, I really get it. Like that's what's going on right now. I'm like, oh, I really get it. If you're already a makeup aficionado and you have beautiful blushes, especially if you have beautiful cream blushes and you have highlighters and, you know, cream highlighters or liquid highlights or highlighting base products that work really well for you and you are already out there creating a really beautiful natural natural looking glossy cheek with the products that you already own. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Like maybe someday when you're placing an order from Credo and you know, you have a little bit of extra in your budget and you want to try it, like maybe someday. But it's not like it's outperforming every cream blush in the world and it's a true miracle. It's just a pretty pigmented and pretty sturdy, colorful balm for the cheeks. It's not a miracle. I understand why it's working so well for so many people, but I wouldn't necessarily like aggressively recommend it to a makeup lover who's already doing great with makeup. I would aggressively recommend it to someone who's scared of makeup and who has dry skin or mature skin and just feels like they're worried they're going to look like a clown no matter what they wear, loves the idea of a hybrid cheek and lip product, and kind of really wants to just have one thing to use for everything all the time. And it needs to be something really approachable. Like I would give one of these to my mom or maybe my sister or all of my friends because basically they all fit that definition. Except for my YouTube and Instagram, like friends through work, all my friends from outside of work fit that definition. Like nobody I know wears makeup. So yeah, this is perfect for all my friends. But I think a lot of you out there don't need to worry about it. Unless you came here because you fit that definition and you're just like desperately searching for reviews of Jones Road Miracle Balm because you've gone to the website and clicked on the description and it's like, what the butt is it? I hope I was able to answer that question. And you know, to give you a sense of how much I respect the product, a sense of my complete understanding now of why it has become so iconic and popular, popular, but without whipping you up into a frenzy that makes you feel like you absolutely have to have it if you already have things that will work just like it works. That is it. Thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Again, I hope you'll subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And I hope you're remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.